uh, transfer portal uh, colleges and, well, coaches, for the most part, are pushing for the NCAA to uh, to change the transfer portal windows. To It's going to help them with roster management. And, and I can understand this. You and I uh, discussed this, I want to say, on the last show. It might have been uh, yeah, maybe last we week. We just talked about this, right? Yeah. Uh, but now the coaches are actually pushing forward. The NCAA is looking into it. Um, the two windows would come after the regular season and during the spring. So what we're looking at, basically... I've got an article from CBS Sports pulled up about it. Uh, The AFCA is proposing a set transfer window, and it's going to start basically um, right after the the final week of the regular season, so right after Championship Saturday, and it would go all the way into January. So then you've got, at at one point in early January, like I think right after the National Championship game, after that, then you get to focus on uh, National Signing Day, because I believe they're going to do away with the early signing period. So it'll work right up until February 1st. You have that time to focus on recruiting like high school players. And then after that, you have, you know, February through Ed, whatever, middle of April, and that's going to be your spring camp, whatever, where you're prepping for that. And then April 15th to May 1st would be another transfer portal window for you to jump in the portal, you don't have to sign with a team at that point. You just have to be in the portal at that point. Uh, there are a lot of player personnel people that are kind of against this because they're they're saying we don't have enough staff to be able to look at the number of kids that are going to jump in at those points, right? It's going to be kind of insane. But the, the difference there is, look, one, you guys get paid a lot of money, okay? You can figure yep. this out. And two is... The kids don't have to sign immediately. Like, just because they have to be in by April or by May 1st doesn't mean, like, Jordan Addison got in before the May 1st deadline, and he can sign at any point, and and he will still be eligible. He just had to be in the portal. So, I'm curious, uh, you know, they're eliminating the um, 25-man recruiting class for a little bit. Like, there was a limit on the number of kids you could sign out of high school. Well, obviously... You have a coaching chain, something like that. You lose a ton of players in the transfer portal, whatever. You should be able to bring in more than twenty-five guys. So they're, you, you got to fill a roster. You do have to yeah. fill a roster. That's a that's a player safety issue at some point. Yes. You got to have guys. Yeah, they're they're going to fix that for a little. And it it may and only be two three more years. kids of scholarship. So it's not like you're you know. Yeah, yeah. No, this is it's a market correction that that will eventually be fixed, et cetera. But uh, but yes, I'm I'm curious your thoughts here. It, it, do you like these portal windows? I, I kind of dig it. I want to have a more nope. regulated nope. schedule. I like it. Don't 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 have a problem with the schedule. Don't have a problem with, with any of that. I, I don't want anybody to be able to stop these kids from doing what they want to do. And 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 I'm okay with, with a window of time to say, hey, you gotta be responsible, you gotta be a grown up. By this day, you have to make your mind up if you're gonna leave or not. All right? You don't have to leave by then, but you you gotta at least let somebody know this is when you're leaving. Um, and I'm okay with that. This school's complaining that they don't have any. What Nebraska just got in trouble for having too much staff. <laughs> These guys have way too much staff. Go look at the amount of money and the amount of people that work for these just football only staff. Please don't tell me you're understaffed. Everybody who works in the private sector of the world that actually has to make something for a living to, to, to like to like get a living is working three or four jobs at one time at all times. And you literally have somebody who just is an, is, a, is an offensive analyst that only handles passing plays. Like, that's your only job at most of these things. You're so specialized. That, please don't tell me you don't have enough staff. I don't want to hear that bullshit. I just don't. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're not wrong. By the way, uh, yesterday, 25-year anniversary – of the NCAA uh, being beaten in court because they had capped how much assistant coaches could make. Uh, they got sued in federal court, and they lost. So that is yeah, why they uh, – they, Hang on, Gary. Yeah. I would like somebody to look up and find a court case that the NCAA has actually won. I don't okay? know that there is Because one. I don't know that it's ever happened, which tells me this. Sue these motherfuckers because you're going to win. Because they're that bad at everything they do. If that doesn't tell you that this organization should be disbanded, I don't know what else to tell you. They've never won a court case where they've ever been challenged. 
That's what John Ruiz was saying. He said, try me. Because they're bad at everything they do. And hang on, the reason they're losing court cases is because what they're doing is either unethical, immoral, or against governmental law. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they're doing. You're 100% right. 100% right. I I just don't know how these people have stayed in power, and we, we know their name. We know who they are. It's it's certainly something. I, I can't wait to see who the next president of the NCAA is going to be because that is that's going to be one hell of a job. <laughs> I'm, I'm not got a lot to deal with. I am half I am half tempted to send send resume in because I'm going to write a hell of a cover letter, and, and I'm <laughs> and I'm just going to point out all these things that we talk about on the show about how inept they've been and how terrible they've been. How it, 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 you're not going to select me because I hate you, and I just probably try to bring the place down from the inside out, but. I, I'm going to tell you, whoever you bring in, they they do not need – Pat Forty has talked about this and written about this a couple of times now. They just – they can't bring in another former athletic director or school president or, you know, Andrew Luck's daddy. Like, they can't bring – you can't bring somebody in from the college football committee. Like, it can't be somebody who's already in the guard. If you're a member of the country club, you don't need to be the person that gets this job. The yeah. problem is, is it's only people in the country club that are making the hire. Yeah. But they don't understand is if you want to keep the country club and you don't want the country club to go away, then you better bring somebody in that's not a member because they'll be able to walk in, cut all the fat, get rid of everybody that's worthless, and actually try to start doing some good. I think the Pac-12 was a little bit ahead of the curve on this. They They understood... This is yeah. not just the the well, game has changed, right? George I, I, Klyovkov you can, had you can good say that they were ahead of the curve, Gary. I don't know that the head of the curve or they were just so far below where everybody else is. Sometimes you've got to hit rock bottom before you say, you know what, we got to do something different. Yeah. And, and I think they had hit rock bottom. All right. Oh, they certainly had. Certainly had. Uh, but bringing in Klyovkov, who was at MGM and and all that, who I had, gonna be, I think he's going to do fantastic. Yeah, Damn, I he think had no experience. Klyovkov there. I think Klyovkov is 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 there with with uh, uh with with Sly is because he's with, the only one that probably has the balls to go do it. Uh, probably so he, with Sankey, by the way, Mike Sly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but yes, but, I think you're but, right. But but it's because he's the only he's the only commissioner that says fuck it, I'll go. Let's go. Let, it, hell, it could have been his idea. Hey, we got to do something, guys. We can't just sit on our ass. Yeah, I don't think you're wrong. I don't know that he was selected, and I don't know if he was asked. I, I, I think it was either his idea or he put himself in that position because that's what leaders do, by the way. Whether they're right or wrong, they at least go out and they leave. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. First guy through the wall is always bloody. He's going to try to do something different. And, 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 and that means he's going to get beaten up for it. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures. Or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe. And we'll see you soon.